So as I had mentioned in my last video, I'm going to talk to you guys about two crucial processes within the STEM world. And that's going to be the engineering design and the scientific method processes. So when we take a look at both of these, what's important to know is that both of these are known as what's called iterative processes which means that you go through them over and over and over again until you get the optimal design or conclusion or product that you're looking for. However, there's slight differences and it's important to understand these two differences when you're deciding which one to use. So let's first take a look at the scientific method. The scientific method is a process for experimentation that is used to explore observations and answer questions and it can be modified but so can the engineering design process the engineering design process is a series of steps that engineers follow to come up with a solution to a problem the solution involves designing a product like a machine or computer code that meets certain criteria and or accomplishes a certain task the engineering design process is different from the steps of the scientific method. If your project involves making observations and doing experiments, you should probably follow the scientific method. If your project, project involves designing, building, testing something, then you should probably follow the engineering and design process. Both of these can be used over and over again, and sometimes you're going to be using both of them depending on what your project is. However, you need to be purposeful about which one you choose and when you use it. So let's take a look at, at a flow map. Sometimes flow maps or these visuals help to um, better understand what the differences are between the scientific method and the engineering design process. So if we take a look at the scientific method, you know that there's, or you'll notice that there's different vocabulary, such as question and doing uh, a hypothesis or constructing hypothesis, experimenting. Well, in the engineering design method, we've got problem, we've got background research, and we've got specifying requirements such as criteria and constraints. And you'll notice that these arrows that run back into the process, that's demonstrating that iterative process. And you notice that both processes and the communication of your results, because that's super important in the engineering world. In order for people to understand what it is that you accomplished. And if you wanted to, we've also got a chart visual here that lays out the different terminology and the different steps to both processes. Also, on this last slide, you'll notice that down here on the bottom, there's a link to Science Buddies page. Science Buddies has a great page that discusses how these two processes compare. So which one will you choose? Well, before you choose, it's important to ask yourself some questions. One question, are you trying to make observations or conducting an experiment? If so, you might want to use the scientific method. Are you trying to design a product, build a prototype, or test something? If so, you're probably going to want to use the engineering design process. So something that's really cool about the engineering design process, as well as the scientific method, is that it can really be seen in almost anywhere in real life. So like I said earlier, I really like the outdoors and I like going on walks and just being outside. So I'm going to go on a little bit of a bike ride, a little bit of a walk, a little bit of a walk and a dog to show you guys some different examples of the engineering design process and the scientific method in the real world. This is my cousin's dog, Brody. He's got a great sense of smell, and he's got lots of muscles that power him forward, as well as he's got really good hearing. And he can't exactly get the hint that we should stop pulling on the leash. The cars that are driving by me take the gasoline or the other types of fuel that are inside them, convert that into chemical energy, which is then converted into mechanical energy, which allows them to move and transporting people inside the cars from place to place. This is Sloan's Lake, which is in Denver, Colorado. It's a man-made lake, and it might look really beautiful, but man-made lakes take a lot of thought, engineering, and design 
in order to make sure that they have minimum impact on the environment. However, these lakes that are in an urban environment, which is a city-like environment, often get very polluted, which can also cause a lot of issues when it comes to the engineering and scientific world. The sun is a giant ball of energy, and that giant ball of energy is responsible for so many things. It's responsible for creating the seasons of weather that we have here in the beautiful state of Colorado, as well as it's responsible for a lot of energy that we use here on Earth, such as powering our houses, cars, and lots of other pieces of technology through solar energy. My bicycle has STEM and engineering written all over it. As I pedal my bike, I'm transferring energy from my legs to the pedals, which utilize crank and pulling mechanisms with my chain and my pedals in order to move me forward. As well as when I go up to my brakes when I want to slow down, as I squeeze those, that's another utilization of technology that helps me to be safer as I ride my bike. However, my bike sounded pretty squeaky, so I may want to do a tune-up soon. I really didn't even need to leave my apartment in order to see the works of engineering and science in the world. As I look in my fridge, I'm able to see all the different ingredients and different uh, chemicals that are in the food in order to give us energy, as well as I'm able to see how the electrical engineering of something like a crock pot is able to transfer heat from the actual electrical outlet into the pan, into the food that I'm going to then eat. Needless to say, STEM is everywhere. I hope you enjoyed this video.